what's happening right now is like the reason why you fight and it's the long hours and it's the long days and it's being away from your family and like having that feeling and that purpose is what all of that work is about and like living in those moments but also being able to take that time to go that's it that's the moment holy shit I'm in it and to like yeah. actually recognize that stuff is like it's so special to be able it's to do that on another level and I you know I feel like you know there's those wrestlers and I'll fucking eat some shit on this I don't care <laughs> like everybody thinks they can wrestle mm -hmm. everybody thinks that they can do this and you know where I come from where I really come from there's some real fucking levels to this shit and if there was a belt system and professional wrestling it would be a little bit different. Right. And, you know, people would be having different fucking conversations. Right. But there isn't because everybody can do it and it's entertainment and it's smoke and mirrors and that's not what I bring. I bring me. Like, that's... <sighs> when you talk about, like, the belt system that happens, whether it's uh, judo, jujitsu, and if something like that were to exist in professional wrestling, and I feel like there's always that conversation of, like, professional wrestling is so built on respect. Yeah. But you look at the differences of something like having that belt system and the respect that somebody learns from, like, literally with my daughter, I'm like, I want to put her in martial arts to learn respect to a degree. Like, that is what that's all about. What are the differences you see between those two types of respect? In professional wrestling nowadays, like, if you're not old school and you're not known for being old school, um, you don't got it. <laughs> you just don't fucking got it. Nobody gives you a lick of fucking time. They just like look you up and down and they will keep minding their business. But you have to have that like you got to have that you, tough skin. You got to understand that like, you know, this shit doesn't come easy. And like people coming in now, it's yeah, it's a little like, I don't know. Like I just this is this is all I have to relate it to. If you come if you come into a jujitsu school and you have no fucking training at all. Like, no one's going to fucking care about your clout. Right. Yeah. No. Because yeah. you, can, you can have a black belt in clout, but in a gym, like, they're only going to be nice to you because it gets more people in the door. Right. And they know that about you. And yeah. they, <laughs> that's all you are. Yeah. Is, you know, they're giving you a good job for, or a good jab for your clout. But. Like, in jiu-jitsu, like, you really fucking have to earn that shit. And I'm I'm really grateful that I have a handful of people in this business who, like, remind me what that belt system is. Mm -hmm. Like, I know I'm fucking green, but I'm not afraid of the hard work. Yeah. I'm not. I've done it. Yeah. I've surpassed people who are really good at it. Like, the fucking... Oh, man, Norman Smiley used to try to kick my ass. He would, fucking, he would fucking have his little timer on a button, and, like, he's like, all right, go again, go again. And, like, he's like, you're coming up on eight minutes. I'm like, keep going, motherfucker. We're going to 20. Like, Damn. And I just, I just didn't care. Damn. I didn't care, and this was at, like, 8 o'clock in the morning during fucking COVID. Yeah. Because you just, you're, everybody's hit a wall emotionally, and yeah. I'm just like, fuck it. I might never get out of my house again. Like, <laughs> I'm a freak flag fly out here. <laughs> So how do you get back to that moment, that moment at Bloodsport? How do you get back to that moment with where you're at now? Well, for me personally, um, just, just having to have dealt with some struggles these last, like, few months. Like, I just haven't really been happy with, like, I just, I know there's more to me, and I, I'm, not, I'm not doing myself any service. And, like, the reason I had that was because I had, I was so happy I was happy at home. Mm -hmm. You know, I was happy with myself. I know I worked hard and I had nothing to lose. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I got to like remind myself every day that I have nothing to fucking lose. Right. I refuse to sell out. I refuse to fucking give somebody something I know I don't have. Yeah. I just, I don't know. Humble me. Like, I'm ready. Like, I just, <laughs> that's the only way you're going to, like, get that respect, right? Yeah. And um, I just, I, when I approach this stuff, I just really want to work with people really bad. Who I don't want to work with. Uh, Serena. Mm. Easy. Yeah. Like Mar uh, Mercedes. Easy. Mm. Athena. Holy shit. We'll beat the shit out of each other. <laughs> Fuck. Like, give me Brit. Fucking yeah. give me Jamie. Give me the, give me, no. Fuck that. Give me Kiara, give me Diamante, give me all the girls that are like, 
who also are in that bubble who want to like break that ceiling. Mm-hmm. I want all those girls because everybody has something to offer. Yeah. Not just one fucking person. And I, I want for the women, I feel like once we really like, once we get back to understanding how to like seriously lean on each other and trust, yeah. it's just going to be what it is. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, I mean, all those matches and all, I mean, all those women you see, but you don't see because you don't get, there's only so much TV time. Exactly. Right. And that's, you know, sort of the spot that everyone's kind of stuck between rock and a hard place of. And that's fine. You know, and like, you know, I just give us a real opportunity as the women's like, so I used to fucking say this shit all the time and and the, we would have, like, these locker room meetings, like, back in the day. And, like, does anybody else have anything fucking to say? I've been in the business for six months. They, if they had tomatoes and eggs, they would have fucking thrown that shit at me. But I just felt it. I didn't give a fuck. I've been the same person. Ask anybody. I've been the same person from when they met me to now. I said, we are not each other's competition. We are not trying to fucking kill each other. Yeah. We are in competition with that fucking locker room. Right. And you know who's in that fucking locker room? My husband. But you know what? Fuck him. Fuck him. <laughs> yeah. I want to be in the spot that he's in. Yeah. And yeah. I'm after his ass. Yeah. Yeah. And it makes our sex life amazing. <laughs> and like. Get it, girl. Like, I just. That's, that's me. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody's just looked at me and they're like, shut. She's no. Like, uh, well, you know, it. you just, you never know. I was the new girl and right. I, you know, I only, I only worked my fucking ass off in pure martial arts, mm-hmm. but I didn't go to a fucking professional wrestling seminar. Sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah. I will. Mm-hmm. Send me to one. Send me to 50. I would love to. Yeah. But I'm sorry that like your feelings are hurt because I didn't do what you had to do. Right. Right. And yeah. that's why everybody fucking hated Rhonda. <laughs> oh, my God. Right. God, you guys must have had to be a fly on the wall for some of the conversations you guys Dude, had. <laughs> I can't. She's a fucking beast, man. Like, yeah. she just, she knows what to just let roll off her shoulder. Mm-hmm. And she knows what needs to light her ass on fire. Like, yeah. she knows. Yeah. She's got that gauge. And I wish, I like, that's what I, that's how well I want to know myself. 